Like share and subscribe for more great Cobra Kai content. Turn on notifications to never miss another Cobra Kai video again. Help get this video to 100 likes if you would like us to keep releasing more Cobra Kai videos like this one. Please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Instagram and other social media platforms, to help new and old fans find these Cobra Kai videos. In this Cobra Kai fanspiration, we tell the story of how Daniel met Amanda. This story was written by Julia Beth. Remember to support the writers on social media. And now let's begin. Blue clear sky. Here she comes. A walkin', talkin' true love. Sayin' I've been looking for you love. Out of the blue clear sky. Daniel had just come home from the worst date he'd had in a long time. True, he had known that perhaps Emily wasn't the one for him, but he hadn't been expecting her to break up with him over dinner. Then there was the incredibly awkward drive home. They had sat in absolute silence for the six miles from the restaurant to her house. Look, Daniel, she said, finally. You're a great guy, but you're just too devoted to your work right now. I'm sorry. Really I am, but I just need someone who is a little more there for me. I mean, even when you're here, you're not here. She leaned over and kissed him on the cheek. I know you just opened your dealership this year and that's great but you really need to take some time for you or you're going to get burnt out and end up hating the thing you love so much right now. Yeah. He had to admit there was some wisdom to her words. He gave her a genuine hug. Thanks, M. I guess I'll see you around. I hope so, she smiled, leaving. Now that he was home, all he wanted to do was crawl into bed and forget this night happened for a few hours. He was going to give up on women. Really he was. He saw the light on his answering machine blinking but he just didn't have the energy to deal with it. Probably just the dealership he'd check it in the morning and he really meant to, but by the time he had gotten ready for bed, that nagging feeling that he was leaving things undone wouldn't let him rest. He got out of bed and went back to his tiny kitchen to listen to the message. Daniel San. This Miyagi. Call soon. Very important. He chuckled at his mentor's way of leaving a message as he looked at the clock. It was after 11, but he if knew Mr. Miyagi, the older man was waiting up by his phone for Daniel to call. He dialed the familiar number. Mr. Miyagi picked up on the first ring, just as Daniel had known he would. Daniel San. Miyagi need you to go with him to Boston next month. What did you lose in Boston? Daniel cracked. No lose. Knew Julie San was there, Miyagi plowed past Daniel's sarcasm. Julie. Daniel nodded to himself, remembering that Julie Pierce lived in Boston. She was the granddaughter of one of Mr. Miyagi's army buddies and a former student of his. He knew Mr. Miyagi had kept in close contact with the young woman. What's going on? Julie San and Eric getting married and want Miyagi to walk bride down the aisle, he said with pride. That's great, Mr. Miyagi, he said, sincerely. I'll come by tomorrow and work out the details. How was date, Daniel San? I'd rather not talk about that, he groaned. Well, maybe Daniel San catch bouquet at wedding, Miyagi joked. Yeah, okay, Daniel said with a grin. Good night, Mr. Miyagi. Good night, Daniel San. That was how Daniel came to be on a plane to Boston a month and a half later. He couldn't really afford to take off from his new dealership, but at the same time, there was no way Daniel was going to let Mr. Miyagi miss Julie's wedding. It wasn't that the older man couldn't go by himself. He was still healthy, it was just that sometimes, especially when he was stressed, his mind would, wander. It wasn't often, not even once a month, but the thought of Mr. Miyagi far from home, confused and scared had haunted Daniel into leaving the dealership in the hopefully capable hands of Anoush and head to Boston. The six-and-half-hour flight was turning into a ten-hour trip due to a late departure causing them to miss their connection so now they would have a three-hour layover in Chicago. That was just great. At this rate, Daniel would get Mr. Miyagi to the hotel the wedding was being held at about 30 minutes after the dress rehearsal was supposed to start. If nothing else happened. Oh well, it couldn't be helped. Daniel would call Julie during the layover and let her know what was going on. Halfway through the first fight, Mr. Miyagi leaned over to Daniel. Daniel San, he said, seriously. During layover, get some chocolate bars with almonds. 
Way ahead of you, Mr. Miyagi, Daniel laughed. He pulled his carry-on bag from under the seat and fished out two Hershey's bars with almonds and passed one over to his friend. He flagged the flight attendant down and ordered two colas. Thank you, he said, finishing his snack and leaning his head back against the seat to take a nap. Anytime, Daniel smiled, happy to see Mr. Miyagi content. After all, he had done for him and his mom, making Mr. Miyagi's golden years easier was the least Daniel felt he could do. As he had predicted, they got to the hotel at 7.30 that evening. When he'd called Julie, she said, we'll wait for him. Well, I mean, that's just my guess, it could be longer, Daniel said apologetically. Daniel, Eric and I wouldn't even be together if it wasn't for Mr. Miyagi. We might not even be alive. We'll wait all night if we need to and if anyone in the wedding doesn't like it, they can leave, she replied firmly. Okay, Daniel said. I'll get him there as I possibly can. Thanks, Daniel, she said. I can't wait to meet you. He had never met Julie, but after working with her on arrangements the last month, coupled with Mr. Miyagi's stories, he felt like he already knew her. Me too. He ushered Mr. Miyagi into the banquet room he'd been directed to. Mr. Miyagi. A tall, slender woman came sprinting down the aisle, stopping just short of crashing into them and bowed before throwing her arms around his neck. You made it. Hi. Julie San. Wouldn't miss it, he replied, briskly, but Daniel could tell he was just as happy to see the young woman as she was to see him. Good to see you, Mr. Miyagi. Her groom had followed at a more sedate pace. He bowed then shook Mr. Miyagi's hand. Good to see you, too, Eric. You must be Daniel, Julie said, throwing her arms around him as well. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for getting him here. It wouldn't have been the same without him. My pleasure, Daniel replied, returning her embrace. I need to go check us in and take our luggage up. No problem, Eric said. I'll get Amanda to help you. Mandy. He called out to a dark-haired girl sitting a few feet away. When she didn't respond he tried again. Still not getting an answer, he pulled a coin out of his pocket and tossed it, hitting her arm, not hard, but enough to get her attention. What? She cried, jerking a set of earbuds out of her ears. What do you want, Eric? She turned to face them and Daniel's breath caught in his throat. She was beautiful. No. Beautiful didn't come close to describing her. She was willowy with dark hair to her waist, sparkling green eyes, and pouty lips just begging to be kissed. She even buried Allie. Can you show Daniel where to check in and help him take their bags to their room? He asked. What am I? A bellhop. Yeah, Eric replied with the authority only an older sibling can call up. So pick up your tip and do what I asked please. She bent down and picked the coin up off the floor and examined it. I'm gonna need more than a dime, she shot back. How about I remind you that I pay your room and board so that you don't have to live with Nana and Pop in Texas, Eric replied. Very good point, she replied, pointing her finger at him. She exaggeratedly rushed over to them and picked up Mr. Miyagi's bag and looked at Daniel. Right this way, Mr. Um. LaRusso, he replied. Daniel LaRusso. Mr. LaRusso, she smiled, holding out her free hand. I'm Mandy McGowan. She took him to the check-in desk, then helped him carry their bags up to the room. So, you live in Texas? Daniel asked, making small talk. I go to school at Texas State University, she replied. That's where we were from before my mom moved us here for work. Are you in grad school? Something like that, she smiled. Do you want to get a drink? You don't have to be at the rehearsal, he asked. Nah. I'm not in the wedding. I have to give a speech at the reception tomorrow, but I'm not in the actual ceremony, she replied. Dinner won't be for another hour, so why don't we have a drink, then meet them in the dining room? Sure, he shrugged. They went to the small bar in the hotel lobby. Dirty martini, ice cold, he ordered, then looked at her. Ginger ale and bitters, she said, watching his eyebrow raise at her choice of non-alcoholic drink. She shrugged. I have to drive my mom home after dinner. Ah, he nodded, buying the excuse. What are you studying? I'm working on my MBA, she replied. It wasn't a total lie. 
She was working on her MBA, she just had four years to go instead of two. I want to work in marketing. What do you do? I own a car dealership, he said. So, you're a car salesman, she grinned. Yes, he laughed, knowing what she was implying. But not a sleazy one. I don't sell anything I wouldn't drive myself. Is Mr. Miyagi like, your grandfather, she asked. More like a father, he answered. He helped me out when I needed a father. Now he needs a son, so it's my turn. That's really sweet, she smiled. I don't know him, but I know he saved Eric's life so he's cool with me. He told me about that, Daniel said. That Duggan guy sounded like a real piece of work. She nodded. I mean, I didn't go to that school, but it was well known even at my school that he was psycho. Mr. Miyagi did the whole town a favor in getting rid of that guy. Yeah, he's good like that, he smiled. Before Daniel knew it, the hour had passed and Mandy was rushing them back to the dining room. They talked all through dinner. As people started leaving, she leaned into him and said, I do have to drive my mom back to her apartment, but after that, I'm meeting some friends at the club next door. If you aren't too jet lagged, I'd love to spend some more time with you. Okay, he nodded. I'll definitely try. If you get away, I'll see you in an hour, if not, I guess I'll see you at the ceremony tomorrow. She kissed him on the cheek before leaving. Nothing was going to keep him from meeting her. Fortunately, Mr. Miyagi didn't ask him too many questions as he got them settled in their room, then got ready to leave. Nice girl. Mr. Miyagi asked. Very nice, Daniel smiled. Miyagi said Daniel-san would catch the bouquet, he chuckled. Maybe you'll be right, Daniel laughed. See you in the morning. Daniel grimaced as he walked into the crowded club. This wasn't his scene. He didn't dance and he wasn't much of a drinker, besides, all of his time was spent at the dealership. About once a month, Anoush would convince him to go out for drinks then try to introduce him to women, but it just wasn't his thing. However, he could stand a night at a club to spend some more time with Mandy McGowan. Mandy was leaning against the bar talking to a group of friends. She had traded her rehearsal dress for tight-fitting jeans and a low-cut, practically backless blouse, and had pulled her hair up into a ponytail, revealing her slender neck. Her stiletto heels had been traded for scuffed boots, making her just shorter than him. When she saw him, her face lit up, and she waved him over. You came. She hugged him. Guys, this is Daniel. He's a guest at Eric's wedding. Daniel, this is Mary, Rachel, Mac, and Isaiah. They're friends from school. Nice to meet you, he said politely. He ordered a martini and sat down on a bar stool. He couldn't help but smile when Mandy stepped back between his legs and leaned against him while talking to her friends. I love Texas, but there are rules to living there, she said, talking with her hands. I mean, we moved to Boston when I was six, so I don't know these things, but I'm learning. For example, I have learned that you can say anything you want to anybody, provided you don't curse, and you start it with, bless your heart, and finish with, honey, sweetie, or darling. Hand on a Bible, I saw my sorority president tell a girl, well, honey, I know you want to pledge and that your mama was a tri-delta but sweetie, bless her heart, your mama was a tramp and you aren't getting in on her recommendation. The girl laughed and said, my mama is a bit eccentric, I understand. But I say, hey, yo, and they threatened to kick me out. She laughed and put her drink on the bar, turning to face Daniel. Let's dance. I don't dance, he said, shaking his head. You do when you're with me, she grinned. No. I really can't, he said. Daniel, she pressed up on her tiptoes and looped her arms around his neck. You are 3,000 miles from home. You will literally never see any of these people again. Who cares if you can dance or not? Come dance with me. Well, when you put it that way, he let her lead him to the dance floor even though he hadn't danced since senior prom with Allie. It didn't matter. Halfway through the first song, those perfectly kissable lips were on his and he was certain that they didn't even come up for air until they were at the door of her hotel room three hours later. Okay, she pulled away and stepped back. We have to go to sleep. And I have to write a speech, so I'll see you in the morning. She fished her key card out of her pocket, but instead of opening the door, she reached for Daniel again, bringing his mouth down on hers. 
He wrapped his arms around her waist and pressed her against him. When she broke away again, she said, you have to go now. Why? He asked. She clearly didn't want him to as she hadn't let go of his shirt yet. Because I don't sleep with guys on the first date and I have to write a speech and I'm absolutely certain that if you don't leave right now, I will sleep a guy on the first date and I won't write that speech, so you have to go, she said, kissing his neck. Well, then you have to let go, he smirked. Right. She smoothed his shirt down and opened her door, but didn't go in. Instead, she turned back to him and kissed him again. Speech, Amanda, speech, 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 you have to write a speech, she mumbled as he trailed kisses down her neck. Okay, he said, letting her go and stepping back far enough to put some real distance between them. I'll be the good guy and leave. Thanks, she laughed. I'll see you tomorrow. Looking forward to it, he replied. Now, go in and shut the door before I change my mind about being good and you don't get the speech written. Right, she laughed again. Good night Daniel. Good night Amanda. As soon as she was safely in her room, he went up two floors to his room. He quickly shed his clothes and got in bed. Even though jet lag was finally setting in and he could barely keep his eyes open, he couldn't stop the smile spreading across his face as he thought about Amanda. Damn, that woman was something special. Daniel was certain that he had never seen Mr. Miyagi look so proud as he did walking Julie down the aisle and he wouldn't see it again until he would see Mr. Miyagi standing next to him at his own wedding four years later. Amanda did get her speech written and did a great job of it. As soon as she was done, she made a beeline for where Daniel was sitting with Mr. Miyagi and a group of Buddhist monks that were his friends. Daniel, come dance with me, she said, grabbing his hand. I already told you that I don't know how to dance, he shook his head. Besides, I need to help Mr. Miyagi. Daniel San, Miyagi can get own drinks, Mr. Miyagi interrupted. Go dance with the pretty girl. Thank you, Mr. Miyagi, Mandy smiled. She grabbed Daniel's arm and pulled him out of his seat. Daniel, a younger monk stopped him. It is my honor to care for my elder monks. It would be my honor to care for Mr. Miyagi as well. Go have fun. Are you sure? Daniel asked, feeling a little guilty. Positive, the young man said. I'm already looking after four drunk monks. Four drunk monks and their drunk friend won't be that much more difficult. I'll make sure he gets back to your room safely. As I said, it would be my honor. Go have fun, Daniel San, Mr. Miyagi said, waving him away. I guess it's settled then, Daniel said, then bowed to Miyagi and the monks. Thanks again, he told the younger one. He let Mandy lead him to the dance floor but after three dances, requested they get something to drink instead. They were at the bar when Eric and Julie joined them. Daniel, Eric feigned outrage. Are you giving my underage sister alcohol? I wanted to give her her first drink. Daniel's face lost all color. How old are you? He asked her. 19, Eric answered. Okay, first of all, Mandy interrupted. I'm 20. Second of all, I might have let him believe I was a little older than that, so you can't blame him, and third, I am a sorority girl at Texas State, do you really think this is my first drink? She held up her glass. Okay, so for some reason to Daniel being 20 wasn't as bad as still being a teenager, but he was still freaking out. Relax, Eric laughed, clapping him on the back. I'm just messing with you too. Right, Daniel replied. We just wanted to say thank you again for making sure that Mr. Miyagi was able to be here, Julie said. It really means a lot. It was my pleasure, Daniel replied. We're about to leave, Eric said. So, thank you for everything. It was great to finally meet you. Little sister, don't get in too much trouble while I'm gone. He hugged her, then shook Daniel's hand. No promises, Mandy quipped, hugging him back before turning to hug Julie. Welcome to the family. Daniel San, Julie said, hugging him. Take good care of Mr. Miyagi and if he, or you, ever need anything, give us a call. Like I told you yesterday, we owe him, our lives pretty much. Will do, Julie San, he replied, hugging her back. Once the happy couple was off for their honeymoon, Mandy turned back to Daniel. You know, she said, drawing circles on the back of his hand with her finger. I don't have to write a speech tonight and this could be considered a second date. 
she leaned in just close enough to brush her lips against his. It definitely could, he replied, catching her meaning. Want to get out of here? Thought you would never ask, she replied, taking his hand. By the time they were in the elevator, they were kissing again. He pushed her hair aside and kissed down her neck, biting at the sensitive curve where it met her shoulder as she struggled to get her door open. She pulled him in the room and pressed him against the wall, kissing him. Wait, he said, pushing her away. Just so I don't get any other big surprises tomorrow, what else did you tell me that wasn't true? She shrugged and kicked off her shoes. I didn't actually tell you anything untrue. I just let you make some untrue assumptions but since you asked, I am 20. I am a student at SU and I am working toward an MBA but I am still an undergraduate. I don't sleep with guys on a first date, and I really did have a speech to write last night. Though I would have thrown both of those out the window last night if you had kept kissing my neck like that. Now is any of that a problem? She asked, pressing up on her toes to kiss his neck while running her hands down his chest to the front of his pants. Because it doesn't exactly feel like it. She wrapped one delicate hand around him. Amanda, he growled, letting his head fall back. Not at all. He picked her up and carried her over to the bed. Not at all. Amanda was gone when Daniel woke up the next morning. Instead, there was a $10 bill with a note on the nightstand. He picked it confused. At first glance, the note simply said, thanks for a great night. Then he realized she had folded it over and taped it shut. He opened it. Just kidding. My flight was changed. And I had to rush out this morning. I didn't want. To wake you. The money is from Julie. She wanted. Me to get Mr. Miyagi some chocolate bars with. Almonds for the trip back. But I had to leave before. The snack bar opened. Can you get him some? Anyway, I know this is pathetic. That we just hooked. Up at a wedding in Texas. And California are way too far apart for us too. Have any kind of real relationship and all that. But I really enjoyed spending time with you these. Past two days. If you ever want to talk give. Me a call, or drop me a line. Tilda Amanda. P.S. I would have given you. At least a 20 for last night. Her phone number and email address were scribbled on the bottom along with a little heart. He folded the note back up and put it his lips, then laughed. Damn, that woman was certainly something special. Did you enjoy this story of how Daniel met Amanda? Let us know what you think in the comments. Help get this video to 100 likes if you would like us to keep releasing more Cobra Kai videos like this one. Don't forget to subscribe, and turn on notifications to never miss another Cobra Kai video again. Please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Instagram and other social media platforms, to help new and old fans find these Cobra Kai videos. And we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.